Welcome back to Off-Label Veterinary News, your source for commentary on animals, medicine, and practice life. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's jump in to an important story that's making the news. How did a euthanasia drug get into pet foods? On New Year's Eve 2016, Nicole and Guy Mel decided to celebrate with their five pugs by offering a special meal of Evinger's hunk of beef au jus, canned dog food. Within minutes after sharing the can of Evinger's, all of the dogs were staggering and convulsing and they were rushed to a nearby veterinary emergency clinic. Sadly, one of the pugs, Tallulah, died a few hours later. The owner sent the remainder of the food for analysis at Michigan State University Diagnostic Center and had a necropsy conducted on Tallulah. The owner said, nobody should have to go through what we went through. The results showed the euthanasia drug penobarbital present. Tallulah's death kicked off a year-long cycle of pet food recalls, lawsuits, and many unanswered questions about how a euthanasia drug ended up in so many pet foods. The presence of penobarbital in pet food has now expanded into the third largest pet food company in the world, the J.M. Smucker Company. Old Roy, Gravy Train, Kibbles and Bits, and Skippy are Smucker's brands recalled, joining Evinger's, Against the Grain, and Cocolicious in the pentobarbital recall. This recall reminds me of the situation in the early 1990s when veterinarians began complaining to the FDA that pentobarbital wasn't working well as a euthanasia agent. I remember adjusting my pentobarbital calculations by adding 10 to 20 pounds to each animal's weight to determine a sufficient dosage. Some veterinarians began speculating that pentobarbital was present in pet foods, especially dog foods that used rendered horse meat. Dog food manufacturers vigorously denied pentobarbital was present in their foods. The FDA promised to investigate these claims. It wasn't until 1998 and 2000 that the FDA published their findings. First, they revealed that pentobarbital was present in dog foods, a lot of dog foods. I encourage you to visit the provided FDA website link to see what brands were studied 20 years ago. Second, and most concerning to me, was that the FDA established the acceptable level for pentobarbital in pet foods. They concluded, somewhat frighteningly, that the low amounts of euthanasia solution present in many dog foods were essentially harmless. The FDA wrote, Thus, the results of the assessment led CVM to conclude that it is highly unlikely a dog consuming dry dog food will experience any adverse effects from exposure to the low levels of pentobarbital found in CVM's dog food survey. But still, we had questions. In 2002, the FDA sought to clarify their 1998 and 2000 studies. Once again, and to my surprise, they continued to defend euthanasia solution in pet foods. The FDA wrote, the low levels of exposure to sodium pentobarbital that dogs might receive through food is unlikely to cause them any adverse health effects. In summary, the FDA acknowledged that pentobarbital was present in foods and that the levels were too low to cause illness or death. This policy established a potential loophole for pet food manufacturers that few veterinarians or pet owners knew existed. But still, how does a euthanasia drug end up in pet food? First of all, I'd like to address the myth that euthanized dogs and cats are the source of pet food pentobarbital. Various labs, including the FDA, use DNA tests to analyze the protein origin and haven't found any cat and dog proteins in pet foods. That's not to say it couldn't happen. It only means the evidence point to, and confirms at this time, other sources of contamination. The FDA and other labs have found rendered horse meat and beef to be present in pet foods containing pentobarbital. The most recent Evinger's and against the grain Cocalicious and Smucker's recalls have been blamed on the presence of rendered horse meat. The Evinger's recall is important not only because it initiated a fantastic journalistic investigation by Lisa Fletcher and her skilled team at Washington DC's ABC affiliate WJLA, but because it exposed 
potentially deceitful marketing by pet food companies. The pet food that allegedly killed Tallulah, the pug, reportedly contained a single ingredient, 100% whole beef cooked in its own juices. Evangers blames the supplier for substituting horse meat for beef, but still, pentobarbital was found after repeated denials by the company. Deny, 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 then blame someone else seems to be the standard corporate defense of public scandals these days. After the 2007 Melmine pet food recall, we made some progress to protection of pet foods and treats. My sincerest hope is that these current pentobarbital pet food recalls will lead to safer foods and more truthful marketing practices. I hope justice will be served for those affected and pet food companies committed to providing the best pet food nutrition will be inspired to do even better. Until then, please carefully evaluate what and how you feed your pet loved ones. And to Tallulah's family, I too hope no family ever has to endure the pain you've experienced. Well, that's it for another edition of Off-Label Veterinary News. I'd love to hear what you think about the current pentobarbital pet food recall. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, keep living that off-label life. Bye.